If you're like me, then you probably hate designing stuff and anything to do with art. And that's quite relevant today because as a programmer, everything we make is expected to look good. Well, today I'm going to show you a pretty cool AI tool that's been blowing up recently that can solve some of these design challenges that you might be facing. And this tool is called LoveArt. I'm going to throw a few examples on screen here of some images and designs that it's created. Now, I know about this tool because I got an email a couple weeks ago inviting me to test it out. And full disclosure, they invited me to try this tool out and to make this video. So I just wanted to be upfront about that before we dive in. But honestly, after spending some time with it, I have to say this is genuinely different from a lot of the other tools that I've used before, and it can actually generate usable designs that are relevant to programmers. Now, LoveArt calls itself the world's first design agent. And at first, obviously, I was skeptical because everyone says they're the first at something. But here's what's actually interesting. Instead of just spitting out a single image from a prompt, which a lot of these tools can do, it works more like having an actual design team member. It breaks down your brief, handles multiple tasks, and manages revisions, and then finally delivers the final assets. Now, it's handling the entire workflow from the concept to the delivery. Now, the version that I'm testing here has a few new capabilities across design, video, and 3D workflows that weren't available before, and I've been testing it to see if it actually lives up to the hype or if it's just another AI tool with some good marketing. Anyways, let me show you what I discovered and what this tool can do, and you can see if you can get any use out of it. All right, so I'm in the tool right now, and I just want to show you a quick example of what this can do and what it looks like. So I'm just going to type in a prompt right here. You can see that I can also enable a few things like internet search, and then I can add, for example, images if I want to give this some kind of reference. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press enter, and what I'm kind of asking this to do is to design some posters for me for a tech themed comedy night titled Stack Overflow, A Night of Developer Fails. Okay, so I just want to get kind of a comic generated and see how it can handle that. Okay, so you can see right now we're kind of brought into this window. We have a new project. I can obviously give this a new name. It's going to start thinking about what to actually do to generate this design, and then it's going to come up with the process it needs to follow and generate the different images for me. So this is a little bit different than some of the other AI tools because it's actually thinking through this step by step in a design focused manner rather than just spitting something out that's trying to match the prompt immediately. All right, so this task just finished. You can see that I had the four posters showing up here. And actually, I think these are pretty good. Now, if we go back to the prompt, just to give you an example here, I wasn't that detailed, right? I just said, OK, we want to have, for example, Java stuck in an endless meeting, JavaScript accidentally deleting undefined, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just told it kind of the color theme to use. But what it was able to do is it was able to do some research, think through this and determine, OK, what languages should I use? So first it went with the uh, what do you call it, Java one here, then it went with the JavaScript one, then it went with Python, then it went with C++. And it actually designed this by thinking through slowly. So it's more like this kind of long running task and agent than it is just simply prompt to image, which a lot of the other tools do. Anyways, I think that's pretty interesting. Now, before I dive into all the features and show you a bunch of examples, I want to share the numbers around this launch because they are pretty insane. So they hit over 100,000 people on their waitlist in just five days from over 70 countries. And I've been checking out their Discord server and there's a ton of people there messing around with this tool and genuinely creating some pretty impressive stuff. But what caught my attention as a developer is the technical approach that they're taking. So instead of building their own AI models from scratch, they've integrated basically every single state of the art model that you can think of. We're talking about GPT Image 1, Flux, VO3, the new OpenAI 03, Gemini Image Gen, Runway Gen 4, Ideogram 3.0, and the list goes on with a ton of models. Now, here's what's interesting is that normally if I wanted to use these AI tools, I have to jump between like six different platforms, pay a bunch of different subscriptions, and work with a ton of different interfaces. Here, this puts all of those models into one canvas, so it allows me to use all of them from a single place. Now, the core concept is pretty straightforward. This is a human plus AI collaboration, but the execution is where it gets interesting. So you can give it a single prompt and it will break that down into multiple tasks and batch out the different variations at scale. So they have this talk, tab and tune workflow, which basically means you describe what you want. It generates options across different tabs and then you can fine tune from there and pick what you want. There's also a style library system and a layered editing that lets you iterate without starting completely from scratch. So let me show you how this actually works in practice with a few examples that I've generated. So now what I want to do is go through a few concrete examples of things that I've created with this tool so you can see what it's capable of doing. 
Now the first here is a wireframe for an application. So this is something that I need quite often. And honestly, I hate designing applications, coming up with color themes, etc. So I decided, let me test out this tool and see if it can do this. Now, some of you guys may know I have a program called DevLaunch where I help developers become job ready software engineers or land a higher paying position. And anyways, what I did here is said, okay, let's imagine I was gonna have a mobile application for my program, even though I'm not planning on doing that right now, help me come up with a wireframe for it. So you can see that it kind of gave me these different pages, these different designs. And then I wasn't really super happy with the first designs that it was giving me. Like it looked really basic, like too wireframey. Like I wanted more kind of stylish designs. So I asked it, can you make a design system for me? So I told it, you know, this is my main brand color that I want come up with the design system. Give me the components, give me uh, what do you call it? The spacing layouts, etc. And then it gave me exactly that. And then based on that, I told it, okay, now create a more advanced kind of complex design system and wireframe. And it did that, right? So it's now pointing to, okay, this is the roadmap, this is the milestones, here are the steps. And then it gave me these different pages, which are designed with the same design system. We can see the profile, et cetera. Now, if you want to look at this whole thing, I'll leave a link to it in the description. You can see that it goes step by step. It does take a long time to run because there's a lot of pages. And this was the initial prompt that I started with. And then I added a bunch of revisions, right? So if we scroll down here, I said, overall, this looks good, but I need more interactive modules and a more cohesive design system. So please, can you make that better? It then made this for me and it kept going. And again, you can interact with this, adjust, etc. Now, what's interesting is when you press on this, you see there's all these different features that you can run directly on these images. So if I wanted to, I could select something inside of here, right? So like select this, and then I could go here, I could extract that I could add another prompt to it. We have all these design features. So you as a human can kind of select what you want and really fine tune the image once it's created without starting completely from scratch. Anyways, let's go over to another example. So moving on to the next example here, I wanted to try to create something that was more photo realistic that had like depictions of humans in it. So that's what I did with this one. Again, you can read this whole prompt, but I pretty much told it create a detailed cinematic professional photo representing the brand energy of DevLaunch, again, my company. And then I gave it a bunch of information. Like I want this to be the moon. I want this, the color tones, etc. So it created this image for me. I then went on and told it after this, uh, can you can use this example and provide me with a full set of brand visuals. And then it was able to do that. Now it didn't use the correct logo because I didn't share the correct logo with it. But you can see that it made like a business card. It made hoodies. It made like this kind of monitor image, which I think actually looks really cool. Made like a dev launch laptop sleeve, sleeve etc. It gave me like a social media profile, a few other images, like a mock-up on a phone, etc. And then some other images here. Now notice while I was doing this, it actually used a smart plan where it passed this specifically to Vario, which specializes in logo design and brand image design. It then created this whole set of images for me. And then you can see here, it actually created the branding kit. So as we go through this, it's using all different kinds of AI models, combining them together, and then ended up using ChatGPT images. But in some of the other examples, we use different models to generate those images. And then you can see it actually asked me, are you satisfied with this so far? Yes or no? I said yes, and then we were good to go. Had I said no, we could add more revisions. Now, if we go down here, you can see there's all kinds of features where, for example, I can enable the custom mode, and then I can actually specify the exact image generator, video generator, or 3D generator that I want to use. Typically, I just allow it to pick for me because I find that I get a better result. And then you can enable the internet search, and you can actually pick specific styles as well that you want to generate the image in. Now, before we go to the next example, I want to show you a few things you can do with these images. So once you generate one of them here, you can just edit it, right? So you can click on the image, you can go edit, and you can just tell the chat what you want to do. So for example, I can say, can you change the main color to be red or something, right? And then we can go actually create a new version of this image and directly edit it for me. Now, while that's working, we also have a bunch of other features here, right? Like I can just press the button and remove the background. I can remove a feature directly from the image by just selecting what it is that I want to remove and pressing the remove button. I'm not going to do that right now. And then we can impaint, which actually means we can tell it what we want to add into the image by selecting something, as you can see here. We can smudge parts of the image, select things from the image, extract them, copy them into other parts. It's pretty interesting what you can do here, and it gives you the ability to really fine tune these without starting from scratch. Okay, and that just finished and you can see there we go. Now we get kind of this red image. Now, obviously, I probably don't want that as the finalized result. I'm just showing you that you can directly edit it. You can select portions. You can add this into the chat as inspiration. And there is a lot of flexibility here in this tool. Anyways, let's move on to the next project here. So in this example here, similar to before, I asked it to create a complete brand kit for the tech mentorship program called DevLaunch. I gave it the target audience. I gave it some of my logos as inspiration. And then I told it, you know, come up with something fresh, etc. 
So it's kind of, uh, what do you call it, generated a few examples here. So Dev Launch, Dev Launch gave me some color schemes, which I asked for a few kind of business cards. And then I was thinking, you know what, I want to try to make some kind of video. So I asked to come up with this complete kind of color palette, which it did. And then if we scroll all the way down here, I actually asked it, can you help me make a video where someone's kind of presenting that for us? So let's see if I can find that. I say, can you make a short interactive video of this brand kit with a voiceover that explains the main dev launch colors and highlights them like a demo? So it started searching through the knowledge base, came up with an execution plan, analyzed the images that we currently have, and then came up with this plan. So first it started generating the voice. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but let's run this. Welcome to the Dev Launch Brand Kit Showcase. So you can hear that it kind of generated this uh, AI voice. It didn't sound great, but that was the first revision. And then what it did is it generated four different options for me that I could potentially use for having like a presenter for this kind of brand kit. So I ended up picking option two, which is this guy right here. But you can see it kind of generated these four different options then allowed me to pick. Once I picked, it generated a mock video. The voice didn't sound 100%, but that was okay. Then it generated some background music for me, and then it combined them together. And then I said, can you add the voiceover rather than just the music because you messed up and just gave me the music instead of the voice. And then eventually I ended up with this video right here, which I'm gonna show you on screen. So let's make this larger and let's watch it. Welcome to the Dev Launch Brand Kit Showcase. DevLaunch is a premium tech mentorship program designed for software developers. And you can see that this was pretty messed up and it was using a voice that like really didn't make any sense with the person that was presenting. So I told it, can you make it a male voice, right? Because like this doesn't make any sense. So it fixed the voice. And then eventually if we go down here, we got this. Welcome to the DevLaunch Brand Kit Showcase. DevLaunch is a premium tech mentorship program designed for software developers and tech professionals. Now, obviously this is not perfect. It could definitely use a lot of work, but I thought it was interesting that it even was able to do that. I haven't really messed around with too much AI video creation before. I was able to do the background music, do the voiceover, create a video that's pretty good for a first revision. And then from here, obviously we could go on, we could tweak it, we can make sure the background looks better and we could give this obviously a lot more thought. And you can see all the videos are generated here. And then if I wanted to, obviously I can download them, adjust them, etc., or I could just start fresh from one of these images. Anyways, that's this example. It shows you that there is video capability in here as well as voiceover and background music. And now I wanna to go to something that's a little bit more abstract. All right, so for this last test, I wanted to do something that was kind of just random and just see, okay, how does this work with something a bit more abstract that's not like dev focused or media kit focused. So I said, you know what? Let's make a realistic NFT collection. Don't worry, I'm not planning on launching an NFT, just something that I think would be interesting. And I said, I wanna have it be like fairies, elves, and other mystical creatures, create five images of just the faces. So it started by giving me these five images. So you can see we have these five here. I then said, okay, that's cool. So if we go down here, now give me the full body shots of each. So it gave me the full body shots of these five characters. And then I told it, you know what? I wanna have a full collection. I wanna have names. I wanna have descriptions for these characters. So you can see when I asked it to do that, that it actually went and started searching for NFT related stuff so it could get some inspiration. So it searched, it found a bunch of these different images here, kind of, uh, what do you call it, summarized all of this information for itself. And then it used that to actually not just generate an image, which you see down here, but actually a full HTML website. So let me show you if I preview the HTML, which I think is kind of crazy, it generated this. So again, we're working with this AI image generator, video generator, design agent, whatever you want to call it. And it actually made full HTML for me, which I was not expecting it to do. Now, obviously at this point, I can't really read any of the information, but it did come up with the titles. So I went back to it and said, okay, that's fine, but can you adjust the text to be easier to read? So same thing. It went, it looked at the design that it created and said, let me make this more readable. And then it came up with this here and you can see now we can actually read the content that we have, right? So mist form, vine control, whatever. And it's giving me these like kind of Pokemon like cards, which I thought was pretty interesting. So that's cool, it's creating the HTML for us, which I literally didn't even know it could do. And then from here, I actually picked one of the NFT characters. I think it was this one right here. I said, can you make a video featuring this NFT character with music and a voiceover saying, welcome to my universe in a dark, ominous tone. So it was able to pick the music, it was able to do the voice generation. And then if we go down here to the final result, this is what we got. Welcome to my universe. And again, it's not perfect, but I think that is pretty cool. So again, something a little bit random, you know, I'm not planning on releasing the NFT collection, but I just wanted to show you this can do something other than like developer related tasks. And I think it's cool that we kind of started with just the faces, went to the bodies, 
went into kind of this collection now where we had additional information and the fact that this design agent can really take care of all of that i don't need to go to different tools and not only can it generate a static image it can do videos as well as what was really interesting to me was this html generation so it created that whole layout gave me this interactive website and it's just gonna do so many things here and it's kind of crazy how many tasks this one tool can handle then of course, if we want, we can now export this work. And there's a bunch of other stuff, obviously, that we can do here more manually. For me, I prefer to let the AI do most of the work, but if you wanted to actually use some of the tools like text, rectangles, ellipse, et cetera, you can go in here and you can modify this. You can in-paint, smudge, as I showed you before. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I think this tool is really interesting. I would recommend checking it out from the link in the description if you need any design related tasks. I know for me, this is going to be a go to, especially when it comes to wireframes, mockups and just inspiration for color palettes and things along those lines. Obviously, if you are more creative and you're doing artistic stuff, you can probably get a better use out of this than I can being really bad at those particular areas. But you get the idea. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.